the after hours tonight, our host, Bill Walter. Uh, Bill has done so much for this town over the years and continues to do that, and the chamber is uh, thrilled to be able to get behind Billy and be here today. So what is going on with the Boys Club? Well, uh, I made a couple little notes here. But, uh, this going to be our window to sit around. They told me that, uh, I think it was uh, Arthur said one time, uh, what you need to do, he says, write your speech on the back of a uh, uh, card that you pass out, and then uh, only use half of what you put on But I just thought I'd let some of the people know about what, what we actually have, have done here over the years. And it's, uh, the karate part of upstairs here started um, back in the early 70s. And we didn't have any place in Pembroke to bring the kids. So we used to meet them here and we'd pick them up and take them over to Norwell at the, at the uh, Norwell police station because they had a program over there down in Sullivan. Hanover had one going, Norwell had one going. Then we started to get one going over here in Pembroke. But we originally started going to bring it over to Norwell. And then we, uh, we got the uh, center school here in the uh, auditorium over here in the basketball uh, room over there. And uh, the first class that we had over there was 86 kids. Wow. And it was uh, $2 a year. So, <laughs> you know, to belong to, uh, to belong to the club. So naturally all the parents said, well, we got, you know, we got a place to, uh, for two bucks, I can bring my kid up there and let him go for a couple hours, you know. Uh, so that, that was uh, quite an experience. And then uh, we, we got this place here in 1979, and uh, we decided to split it up into three different groups with uh, the karate being upstairs, <coughs> boxing being on the first floor, and then uh, the weight room downstairs. And probably over the years, it's like anything, sometimes it's busy as, has to be up here. It's, it's just crazy. Other times it's quiet. You know, it was a church month, so it's uh, it's just uh, all of the different kids that have come here over the years. Um, I knew I was getting old when the kids started bringing their kids in, right? <laughs> so um, it's been almost 40 years that we've had this place here, and we've operated it when we first started it. There was a lot of things that we had to do, but we had no money, so. We did. Uh, we went around and talked to a lot of the businesses and stuff, and that's. And I think that's probably maybe even before the chamber even started doing things. But we were banging on doors talking to businesses. And, uh, so I can. I can remember one time we wanted to put a big beam up across the floor here so we could take out the big post downstairs. Um, so we talked to Dwayne Wrecking Company, and the guy says. Uh, well, if a beam falls off the truck out front, the only way you can get it in the building. And I said, you make it fall off the truck, we'll make it get it in the building. Right? So one Friday night, a uh, Dwayne truck goes by here with a 25-foot beam, 12, big huge, 12-foot beam or whatever, pull the thing off of the truck and lo and behold, it's in the middle of the street out here. <laughs> So we went over to uh, the pizza shop over here, and uh, all the kids were hanging out at the pizza shop. And we said, come on, you got to get over and give us a hand at the boys club. So they all came over, we picked the beam up and got it inside the building. Right? So that's how we, we sturdied up this whole floor, because originally when they stepped on it, you know, we used to, used to do one of these. You know? But we did the roof over, the windows, the siding, I mean, it's, been 40 years of putting money uh, into the building that you know that we really didn't have, but but it's um, all the instructors that are here that work with all the kids and all that. Nobody gets paid. Um, everybody donates their time. So um, you know it's it's we never really advertised and went out and tried to push the club as everybody come here uh, because we never really wanted to. Uh, um, like if Gold's Gym opened up, so we didn't want to compete with, with all these other gyms and stuff like that. So we just wanted our, the, our little place here. Uh, so a lot of kids couldn't afford to go to a gym and stuff like that, so they, they ended up coming here. But um, 
when we first started it, we had a judge that was on the advisory board and the selectman on the advisory board. And, um, the police chief was on the advisory board and the selectman and all that kind of stuff. So it, it was, uh, um, it was run good over the years. And, and it's, uh, and now there's still some people like the guy in the waiting room downstairs, he's been here since it started. He comes here three days a week, the, you know, and he's here. If, if you're here when he's here, and he trains the kids that are here. And if you're a slacker, he makes sure that he tells you, you know, you're a slacker. Uh, the boxing guys that are all here now, and we got a lady that's doing a great job uh, downstairs. Uh, and uh, the guys do an excellent job. Uh, so I is, is here, he does the weight room downstairs and, and the uh, boxing. So if you see a bunch of kids out in the yard someday with a big sled, ropes and all this other stuff that's him dragging the kids around uh, outside so it's not as you can see it's not really a, a huge big place for a, you know it's not uh, like a big gold gym or something it's, it's there's not much spandex in yet so when the kids come here they come here to work out get strong you know and all that stuff and, um, the boxing ring there's a little bit of a story with that that um, I saw a truck going down 139 and I was on the police cruiser one day, and it had a big, huge pipe on it. And I said, geez, we need a big pipe like that to keep the ring. So I pulled the guy over, and I said, Well, <laughs> 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 oh, he says, I'm really sorry to pull you over. I didn't, you weren't doing anything wrong. He looks at me like that, he says, yeah. And I says, where can I get a pipe just like that? <laughs> And he says, where do you want it? <laughs> he said, right at the welding shop down the bottom of the hill on 139. And he said, okay. And he drove down there and dropped it off. Right? And they cut it up and we made that ring. So it cost 300 bucks to make it. And the other last one at 3,000. You know, and it's, you know, when you get in that ring, you gotta fight. There's no way, you, you know, you can't be running around anyway. You gotta fight, I mean, it's, it, you know, it's close quarters. So it's always worked out pretty good. But uh, I was just talking to somebody here earlier and I was saying Andre Tibbet um, got his black belt up here uh, years ago. And uh, you know, there's been a, a lot of big martial artists from all over New England that's been up here over you know, time and time again. I've had some injuries to my back. Unfortunately, I can't do the things that I want to do up here um, right now, but uh, we're hoping to get things going again upstairs here for um, uh, September. That uh, maybe we can get the uh, uh, you know get a little bit of help up here to get the program going again. But the you know, Wagey Roo style has been uh, has been here since we started. And, uh, the town has finally come through with $120,000 to do the roof and windows and get the place beautified and all that. So that's great. And uh, it's just uh, there's probably a lot of good stories from a lot of the kids that were here that grew up. Um, I know a lot of people I run into on the street now that are all older gentlemen and they say, I remember you used to chase me when I was a kid, you know. <laughs> or I was at the boys club, you know, we worked out there and now my son is there or my daughter or something. And, and there's quite a few girls, probably some of the best students I've ever had as girls because they, they just put their whole heart uh, right into it. So we run the uh, self-defense programs up here for women. Uh, we do uh, uh, different courses uh, up here, like uh, boating safety courses. We do firearm safety courses. Uh, the police chief will probably tell you about a lot of the stuff that they did for uh, different courses up here. We're kind of hoping that they get back using this place again and, and a little bit more than what they used to. Um, but it's just kind of a really nice place. It's kind of like a little home here. Um, and I think every year we do fundraisers and things like that. Um, but the money never goes to anybody here. It just goes to equipment or uh, we do something that's going to make the place better. You know, so it's uh, just uh, it's worked out to be an uh, excellent place. Uh, a lot of the people with Tiny and Sutton's is always right up front with their donations and helping us out when we need things and so on. A lot of the other people from the chamber and stuff send us 
not just some money, and it's uh, just a, a good little place. So, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Do you have any fundraising events coming up? Uh, we just had one at uh, the Lucky Dog, and uh, we did a cornhole tournament. This is the second year that we've done that, and uh, we made some pretty good money there. And there's also uh, there's a shirt down there that uh, they were auctioning off too, I guess, and, and we haven't got the reason money from that yet, but that's that's also one more thing that is a chief softball jersey from last year. But I mean there's all there's just the whole place here, there's all kinds of weird things that have kinda of happened here. It's like we were digging out the yard one day and there's this huge big stone uh, came up and we're like, what are we ever gonna do with the stone? How can we even get rid of it? Like we can't even move it. There's nothing around here that can pick the thing up and get it on the truck. Long ago, there's some uh, young kid died in a car accident on Route 14, and uh, his father went down and was going to put a and put a five foot cross where he died on the side of the road. So we thought about that and said, well, I have to get out there and tell this guy, as a police officer, to move this this cross. Out of there, can't have this five foot cross. There. How am I going to do that? Um, so we really thought about it and said, well, instead of letting the kids cry on the side of the road, so we moved the big boulder over in the corner, put a plaque on it, put the kid's name on it, put a light over the top of it with an out of there. And we used to have some nice chairs, so the kids stole them so that they could bring them down in the, in the woods. So we need eventually we got to put those chairs back again. But uh, so we just made something out of you know what was here. So when I went to the, the first thing I did was call the priest and said, "Am I going to get in trouble for removing a five foot cross?" <laughs> 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 I said, "I don't want the guy upstairs yeah. getting mad at me." You know. <laughs> but uh, no, it was uh, worked out great, and uh, you know we have a memorial out here for all kids. You got anything you want to say, Chief? <laughs> I was in his first class in karate back in the 70s. My parents made me cut the grass and take out the trash for the entire summer to pay for the tuition. I didn't realize it was two bucks. Where you got I got an issue with my parents. But, uh, parents. <laughs> uh, this place was built in 1898. It was the Grand Army of the Republic Hall. It was built by the widows of Civil War veterans. And it was a great place for a long time. If you look at all the old pictures and everything else, there was a, a little arbor light out front, and all the celebrations and everything else came through here. Uh, and, and then the building kind of went into a decline on what we knew what to do with it. And I think a lot of that bill saw a vision to do something with it and turn it into the uh, Boys and Girls Club, and it's been that way forever. But some of the real success stories, not just the building, it's, it's having people like these guys make a difference for the kids that they can. Uh, there was a boxing instructor when he was 17, 18 years old. He was kind of a wise guy, getting in trouble. He was just a punky kid. He wanted to come down to the boys club, but the rule is you can't have outstanding court dates and you can't be in trouble. So I remember he grabbed people and he says, what do I gotta do to be a member of the boys club? He says, you gotta square away your court stuff and you gotta those in the right direction, stay out of trouble. He did. He came down here with his friends and started boxing and actually did a couple of fights out of the boys club. And then later on, he was teaching the other kids. And this, the kids that came in and out of here, uh, met a major come back from Afghanistan that used to lift as a kid. Hughes. That poor guy came back 20 years later. We brought him down to the club. He wanted to see all these places. And Bill said, so you, you still bench 350. He had been in the gym in a while because he'd been over in the desert and he had the bench before he would leave. And, and yeah, he, he did. He struggled. He got it. Made him do it. But uh, these guys here, it, things started to drop off again a couple of years ago and, and they took the interest. And if you look at the kids that come in, it's, it's great. It really is great. So anything that we could do to keep this going, again, we don't want to make it too popular because when they're out the door, they're out the door. You know, you can't really you do this. but. Uh, you know, the success is these guys right here and, and, and Bill. Uh, I came here over the years, uh, back when it was really hopping in the uh, 80s. 
because I needed to get in shape to go to the police academy. This place was just crammed full of people. And uh, it, it was amazing the number of people that you meet here that still remember you from working out. And then uh, came back in in the uh, late 90s. I, I had some illness issues and everything else. I had chronic fatigue and my doctor told me, whatever you do, just stay in bed, don't do anything. And I had some young kids and a job, and actually two jobs and a bunch of things. So I came to the gym every single morning to work out here with a couple friends of mine. And then some kids started coming in. You start to get to know them. And then I, I finally got on to, uh, to a decent shift about midnight so I could come in during the day. And I was working out with some of these high school kids, the junior high school kids. They were all stronger than me, but they were great kids. And, and you still meet them today and they'll remember you from the club. And I actually had one kid out of the blue sent me an email and he's working for an insurance company. He says, I want to make a donation. Do you remember me at the boys club? And I says, yeah. Actually, Bruce had your name up on the, the heat register via a slacker, but yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> So, this place has done a lot for a lot of people in its own quiet little way. So, you know, I, I don't know what the, the purpose of the meeting was today, but I hope everybody gets a, you know, this is a gem, and it's probably one of the most photogenic buildings in the town. If you see the, the uh, when it had the cherry tree, and hopefully they replace that, put something on there. This is kind of the coolest stuff in the town. I hope that it stays in the you know, good shape that it is, and it, it's a piece of Pembroke's character. Thanks all for coming. Yeah. Great, Great. Yeah. Thank you. Before we uh, get back to networking, we're moving on for the evening. Uh, there's a couple of uh, house cleaning uh, pieces of business. Uh, the Chamber's next After Hours event will be on Tuesday the 12th at South Paws Doggy Daycare over next to uh, Tomasi's. Of September? Uh, September, yep. Yeah. Second Tuesday of September, and I think that's the 12th. And that'll be 5.30 to 7.30. Karen Price uh, will be showing off her, her new building. She's not that new anymore, but uh, she's have a lot of her furry friends here that night to network oh. with. All the biscuits. That, that should be fine. All the biscuits you can possibly hand out. Uh, our big summer event, the second annual Pembroke Day, is a week from this uh, Saturday, the 19th, down at the Mattachesan Fields. We start at 4 o'clock with the parade of trucks and uh, all kinds of family events, kids' events, all kinds of food, local vendors, uh, all free. Now, I can't say the food's going to be all free. I think it's a buck of dog or a buck of burger or whatever, but everything else is free. And then we cap it off with the chamber once again trouncing the police and fire in a softball game. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't supposed to come out that way. Dunk tech. Don't forget the dunk tech. The dunk tech. Yeah, don't be in the dunk tech. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah, there will be a dunk tech. Chief went in last year. <laughs> Thank God there was an EMT nearby. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God. It you, was you, cold. It was cold. Not one pitcher came out clear because he was shaking so much. And I'm glad no Walter said he couldn't do it last year because I couldn't have lived with the coronary that would have come out of that shock of hitting the water. We damn near lost Janet on the verge when she hit the water. It was that cold. So we're going to get the water in the tank early so it warms up a little this year. Uh, but Josh Cutler will be up there. Matt King will be up there. Mike Gamaras will be up there. Uh, Janet will will go again. Dave Shea? No, Dave Shea. <laughs> Here's the issue. I, I, I displace too much water. <laughs> so you would have to save me for last. <laughs> Mike Hill will be uh, Hill. will be up there. You displace a lot of water. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I displace a lot of hot air. Billy uh, Boyle's going to do it too. Billy Boyle, yeah. 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 Yes, and we will probably add a few more before then. So I hope you'll pass the word. It's a great family day. And we're moving it back in the day. Last uh, year it was from noon to three, and the softball players melted by the time the game began. <laughs> so we're going to uh, go from four to seven. Game starts at seven, and uh, that's always a good game. The Chambers won the last two, but I think over the seven games, I think it's four or three. It's it's pretty even. I'll take you with them. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have the. Uh, and I already know Bill Brennan's already hooked up to, to play for the Police and Fire this year, so they're obviously uh, bringing in. Heavy artillery. We still on target for the helicopter? Uh, <laughs> I don't believe the National Guard is going to supply a helicopter. Okay. Uh, the state trooper, the state hopefully the state police will. I had to respond to the National Guard. Okay. They won't be. Okay. Um, so we've got that on the 19th of August. We have an open date if, uh, if you'd like to host it after hours. Uh, October 10th 
is available right now. Uh, we have our Business of the Year on November 14th. That'll be over at Pembroke Country Club. Nice dinner, and we honor uh, the member of the chamber that uh, has garnished the most attention for a lot of good reasons, and honor them that night. So a lot going on in the chamber. I'd love to see many, many of you members get involved, either with committees or on the board, uh, because this chamber has come a long way. And, uh, and I think I can say quite sincerely, uh, we're well respected in the area. We're kind of a tempo setter for a lot of the smaller chambers, smaller towns. And uh, it just feels good to say you're part of the Pembroke Chamber of Congress. So we'd love to have more people in the pool with us. Again, thanks a million again for coming out tonight. Uh, Billy, thanks for hosting us, and let's get back to that.